Hi there, folks. Welcome to Media Arts. Today, I'm going to talk to you about writing your Media Arts proposal. Now, whether this is your first one or your second or third, this is a bunch of tips that are going to help make this process go smoothly and really uh, hit home when it comes time to have your meeting with me about what you plan to do. So where am I and what am I doing? Well, as far as where you are, you're at the beginning of a really exciting process. You're about to turn your project idea into a finished plan for success. A well-written proposal is an explanation of the project so others, particularly your teacher, can understand what you plan to do. It's a justification of why this project is appropriate for class. Remember that these projects are worth points. And generally speaking, in a lot of classes, your instructor gives you a project assignment, and that assignment is worth a certain number of points. Now, in this class, you're creating the assignment. So why should this project be worth the points that are assigned to it? It's a set of learning goals. And of course, a proposal is a list of necessary resources. You need to know what's necessary to complete a thing where you can't do it. And finally, it's a schedule for successful completion. So there are a lot of details that go into a proposal. Let's break some of these down um, in a more definitive way. So part one, the description. A description is just what it sounds like. Tell us what you plan to make. So what kind of art is it? That's a thing right off the bat. You know, is it a digital painting? Is it a short film? Is it an animation? Is it a sound collage? You know, whatever it is, make sure that you lead with that. I will make a documentary film about, et cetera, et cetera. Speaking of about, what is the subject? So in the case of my example, I'm going to use a documentary film about my great grandfather. And what's the scope and size of this project? You know, if you're doing Photoshop paintings, what size are they going to be? How many are there going to be? Um, if you're doing a video, how long is it going to be? And in this case, we're going to pretend that this video that I'm proposing, this documentary film, is five minutes long. So here's an example of that description. Using my iPhone and iMovie, I will make a five-minute documentary about my great-grandfather who was a Marine in the South Pacific during World War II. It will include live interviews with family, newsreel footage, family, and news photos. Okay, so that's my description. Let's move on. Part two of the proposal, and really very, very important, is the rationale. The rationale is just a fancy word that means a set of reasons for doing something. So in our class, there's only one goal, only one reason to do things, and that is to grow by learning. So in the case of your proposal, your rationale is a list of the expected learning, what learning you expect to take place while you're doing the project. And it must be a list of specific skills and ideas. So, the, so avoid generalized statements. Keep it to a list of, I will learn to do this, and then I will learn to do that. So here's my list for the documentary film. And we're assuming here that I've never made such a thing before. So I will learn to write a script and tell the story in an interesting way. I will learn to use my iPhone to create high quality film clips. I will learn how to light a subject and record sound for live interviews. I will learn to use iMovie to edit video and to add sound and photos. I will learn how to add narr narration to a video. I will learn how to publish my video so that anyone can view it. So that is a good list that's very specific of the things that I will learn in making my documentary film. If someone came to me with a list like that, I would absolutely think that was appropriate. So part three, required equipment, etc. And this really isn't just referring to equipment. It's referring to anyone or anything you're go going to need to get this job done. Um, so here's a simple list of everything I think I might need to do this documentary film. Now, of course, it's possible that I could forget something. That's not really the point. The point is to show that I've thought about it. So to make this documentary film, I might need an iPhone with iMovie, a tripod and a phone adapter, some lights to light my interview subjects and maybe to light my photographs while I uh, copy them. Google Apps, specifically Docs, to write the screenplay. 
YouTube and internet for uh, tutorials on movie making and editing with iMovie, maybe on photographing pictures, uh, photos from the internet about World War II, some family photos, and of course, my family members for interviews. So part four, the timeline. Boy, it's really hard to overemphasize the importance of any of these things. And this timeline is super important. Its goal is to keep the project running smoothly. The timeline is, in fact, a day-to-day -day breakdown of tasks. And, you know, even though you've broken things down day by day, you should never be afraid to do more. If you have a great day and things are moving quickly, you should move right on into the next task if that's doable. Um, but even if you can't do more, what's really important is to try not to do less. You want to try very hard not to fall behind. The timeline is written with specific goals for each phase. And in our class, most of the time that breaks down to 10 classroom days and any outside of class stuff that you're going to do kind of sandwiched in between those days. It has to account for 10 hours of class time. And that doesn't include out of class work because when you're in school, you are allotted 10 classroom days to work on this. And I need for you to be productive every single day even if you're doing outside of class work. So here's an example of part of the timeline for my documentary film. On days one and two, I will write the story of my great grandfather's experiences. On the evening of day two, I will record an interview with my father about his grandfather. On days two and three in school, I will download World War II photos and photograph vintage family photos. On the evening of day three, I will record an interview with my grandmother about her dad. On day four in school, I'll start to edit the film with interviews and photos, and I'll record narration as I need to. So as you can see, this is a very specific set of goals for each day, and it's laid down day by day. I know what I'm going to do on days one and two, the evening of day two, days two and three, the evening of day three, and day four. And I would go all the way through my 10 days of class time. So that's the timeline. Hey, let's take a quick sidebar. So as far as writing proposals, how should your projects be different from each other? You know, you're going to do three projects in the class. And I've said before that I don't want you to do uh, two projects that are exactly the same. So how do you handle that? So the first project, of course, is anything goes. You know, you choose something that's appropriate for a project, and it really doesn't matter what it is. It could be anything. But for your second and third projects, you should consider maybe these ideas, a more challenging, deeper dive into the concepts and skills learned in a previous project. You know, if you do an animation and you'd really, really like to do another one, then you need to come to me with a new set of ideas and skills that you're going to develop or some things that you're going to take to a much deeper level. Or you can do a totally different kind of project. You know, you do an animation for this one and the next project you're going to do a sound collage. And maybe the project after that, you're going to do a Photoshop painting. But um, you can do a totally different kind of project. And of course, along with that is going to come a whole new set of skills and you're going to be examining a whole lot of new ideas. Or you could try this approach. Maybe you bit off more than you could chew with project one. And that, that's really not uncommon. You know, you have, a, you have an idea for what you want to do, and then you find out that the process to make it is a, very complex. For example, I've had students who decide they want to make a video game. Well, a video game is very hard to do. It's, in fact, impossible to do as one project with just 10 class periods. So uh, students get, you know, halfway through their process and they're, they don't, they recognize that they're not going to have a finished product to turn in. So at that point, we can have a conference and figure out where a logical split point is and an explanation that you can provide so that I can grade the first half of your project. And then you continue on and do project two at, or project three as the second half of your project. And that's perfectly acceptable as long as you and I are communicating and conferring and we get a, a strong idea of how you're going to finish. So uh, that's how your project should be different. Let's move on to that last phase here. Some final thoughts. And first, you need to understand that your second and third proposals 
are going to be graded harder than the first one. If this is your first proposal, of course, there's going to be a little leeway in there. You've never done this before. And I'm going to meet with you and talk to you about how to make a better proposal and all of that good stuff. And so you shouldn't worry about it. But after you've had some experience, my expectations are a little different. And so I expect you to be able to do a good description, a good rationale, um, understand how to put together a list of the materials that you might need. And then of course, put together a good timeline. After experience, you should be better at something. And that's the expectation. The next thing I would say to you for all of your proposals is that you're going to need to have a plan for learning the skills that you need to complete your project. I don't know how to do some of the things that you want to do. And this class is not really set up in a format where I'm explaining, you know, step by step, this is how you do a thing. You're going to have to go out and find those resources. Just like, you know, if you were, if you needed to figure out how to do something to fix your car or, uh, or do something around the house or any skill that you wanted to learn how to do, you're going to have to figure out how you do that. It's about learning how to learn. So you need to be ready to answer questions about it. You need to maybe take some notes about YouTube videos you plan to watch or articles you might read. And then you need to bring those notes to our meeting. So good luck. I, I really, truly can't wait to see what you plan to do. I'm always excited and I can't wait till we can sit down and have our meeting.